lift your hands to heaven and magnify the name of the Lord for another privilege to be in his presence. Lift up your two hands, everyone. We all slept and awoke because he sustained us. He's kept us since the year began. We celebrate you, Jesus. Thank him for the refreshing at the spiritual week of emphasis. Ask him to speak to you this morning. I want to hear from you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Today is declared your own day. Amen. It shall be a day to be much remembered in your life. Amen. Peace, serenity, and joy is being restored today to every family. Amen. Every life that is hanging in the balance maritally will be settled today. Amen. Every tension will be deflated in every home. Amen. The glorious marital destiny of everyone in this spiritual family shall be settled today. And by an encounter with his word, somebody's story is changing 360 degrees. Amen. Your turnaround, like a dream of the night, is taking place today. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Just before we sit down, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9 and 10, we have such a great deliverance in this commission last Sunday at one of our churches in Kaduna, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raises the dead. Verse 10, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. We had one agent of the devil from the pit of hell that walked his way into a church and put his explosive device on the chair and went to the toilet to detonate it and was pressing and pressing it won't press. And it was there for 30 minutes. Security men became apprehensive. They went into the toilet and met him calling and calling. Why is he not working? Amen. Now, that church is about five, 6,000 people. Cost be the senders. Cost be their generation. It will become history that these devils ever lived in Nigeria. Yeah. Where would we have been if the devil had had his way? But no, it's a proof that God is in the midst of us. Yes. 
Everybody lift up your two hands and give thanks to God for the victory Rob. Give thanks to God for the victory Rob. Give thanks to God for the victory Rob. The Lord that God is truly in our midst. He will save. He will rejoice over us with singing. He will rest in his Lord. He will joy over us with singing. Celebrate him. Lord Jesus, we thank you. The glory belongs to you, not unto us, but unto you. We give glory. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Thank you and thank you and thank you. Thank you for proving that you are in the midst of your people. Thank you for not defying the plans of the wicked. Thank you for bringing their plans to naught. In the name of Jesus. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Lot of progress in unraveling the source, and we will hear the good news. Amen. Amen. We live in a nation that is at war with ourselves. We have a most retrogressive, most callous, most insensitive government in place. Whether Boko Haram's are government officials or refrats or combined, we don't know. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, who is king over this nation. He is king over all the earth. What is Nigeria? He is king over all the earth. His name is called the king of kings. The love of lords. Every gang of official, non-official, against the well-being of the church in Nigeria comes under a cross today. Amen. When Elisha caused those mockers in the name of the Lord, they were eaten up by beers. When prophets cause, things happen. When prophets, I don't care what devil is behind them. When prophets cause, things happen. For mocking the church of Christ and turning the church of Christ to a priest. And how to feed on their flesh. The law has arisen. As a mighty man of war. They shall eat their own flesh. They shall be drunk with their own blood. And God's people. In Nigeria. Have finally escaped. You will hear news. When God fights a man, the man is finished. God has a reason to fight the cause of the just. Nigeria will no rest again. We shall have peace restored to this land. Those who don't want to be here, they are free to go. Go back to hell, where you came from. Thank you, Jesus. Unveiling a breaking limit heritage in the world. If you diligently hearken to my voice and observe to do what I tell you to do, I will set you high above all nations of the earth. So we are breaking limit virtues in the word of God. Finding the word and engaging it has power 
to put any ordinary person above all the nations of the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. That is the breakthrough. That is breakthrough virtue in the world. That is it takes you above all nations of the earth. I've said it by the Spirit of the Lord over and again. Global, an army of global citizens is rising from this place. Men and women of global repute in their various fields of endeavor is rising from this place. If you believe you are one of them, let me hear your loudest amen. Please know. Attitude is far more important in the sight of God than capacity. Attitude. Attitude. You can sit down in church for life and not experience a change depending on your attitude. The book of Psalms chapter 25 and verse 9. It said, The meek will God guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. So you have no access to being taught without meekness. You know why many believers are granted? They know too much. They know too much and they even pride and say I have done everything God said. That's to show their level of ignorance. You can't do what God says and not experience his reality. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Please know that without meekness our access is limited into revelation. God only teaches the meek. Not I have a PhD in Bible language. That doesn't give you access to revelation. It takes meekness. Eh? Come and learn of me, but come with meekness, or you can't sit in my class, and I will give you rest. Left him therefore that thinks he knows anything, knows that he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But let him think soberly. Let him think so. If I know enough, it will show in my life. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And whosoever the truth shall make free, it shall be free indeed. Let me show you a picture that will help you. We are in a battle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. Now, now when you are confronted by a principality, you need more than you will require when you are confronted by wicked spirits. Amen. Okay, let's take a school setting, for instance, a secondary school. You have cleaners who work there, you have gate men who work there, and then you have uh, non-teaching staff, then you have the uh, teaching staff. Now, when you are confronted by a cleaner, you don't need too much to deal with the issue. But when principals confront you in the school, then <laughs> uh, uh, something must happen extra. For you to overcome. Can I hear your amen? amen? Now, some of us are trying to use what we know in dealing with wicked spirits to deal with principalities. You can't. That can't do it. 
That can handle it. That can handle it. Faith can ward off familiar spirits. But it takes strong faith to ward off principalities. It takes what? Strong faith. That's why many are grounded. And I have done everything. I, 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 no, you have done what you knew at the level of the confrontations you had. You need to know more to deal with these higher forces that are after you. You don't have to be stranded. All the depth, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, are unsearchable as ways. And his past are past finding out. You don't know how much you know. How much you don't know until you know more. You don't know how much you don't know. How much you don't know until you know more. I was sharing something last night at our meeting. Now, I've written books on understanding vision, understanding divine revelation, pursuit of vision. But I'm still learning. The things are too deep. I'm still learning to avoid the derailment. I'm still learning for clarity of access to divine directives. It's a lifelong school, and we are largely victims of our ignorance. Inadequate knowledge in dealing with the issues of our life. So please, I pray that your taste for the world be enhanced this month. Yeah. That we always go back there to check what is missing so you can make the most of your life in the name of Jesus. Please know that that book has all that we will ever need to make the most of our adventure on earth. And in Jesus' name, no one shall end his journey of failure. Yeah. The last defeat you suffered is the last you will ever know. You will not know stagnation again forever. Yeah. And revelation is our access to going from glory to glory as we behold them through the world and gain access to brighter light. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. So revelation is the key for experiencing a change from glory to glory in our life. I pray that no one here will know a setback anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's look at our limit-breaking heritage from the war. I said from the mirror of the world. Remember James chapter 1 and verse 22 to 25. It said, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Because if any man be a doer of the word and not a, a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man that beholds his natural face in a mirror. And he walked away and forget what manner of man he looks like. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, he not been a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, that man shall be blessed in his deed. Revelation has no value without corresponding response. Nothing happens to what you know without engaging with it. The truth you don't engage with will never deliver. You can know everything about healing. If you don't engage with what you know, you'll never experience the healing power of God. You can know everything about prayer. <laughs> you don't engage with it. You can't receive answers. To the prayers you have not prayed. You can know everything about fasting and you don't engage with it, uh, it's self deception. You can know all that you need to know about 
prosperity, you don't engage with the demands thereof, you can't experience it. So what to know holds no value until you engage with it. Matthew 7, 24 and 25, it says, whoever hear the sense of mine and do them, I will like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and then came the rain and the storm and the wind and beat upon that house and it fell not because it was founded upon the rock but whosoever hear the sense of mine and do them not shall be likened unto a man who built his house upon the sand and then the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell, and great was the fall of it. So what you see is amazing. What you do with it is what determines what becomes of you. Amen. 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 You can be quoting scriptures for life without experiencing their reality. We have to do what is demanded to be done for any word from the Lord to deliver in our lives. Every child of God is redeemed a fruitful vine, not a barren fig. Everyone. In Psalm 128 and verse 1 beginning, Blessed be everyone that feared the Lord that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the size of thy house. Thy children, like olive plants, run about thy table. Verse 4. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all thy days. The fear of the Lord simply means the love of God. The love of God. Love is the fulfilling of the law. That means be in love for God guarantees our fruitfulness in all areas of life. Hallelujah. So it does not come true on its own. There is what you must do to experience it. We know that all things work for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose, all things, all things, answer favorably to everyone that truly loves God. A love of God may be challenged, <laughs> but it's not permitted to be defeated. A love of God may be challenged, but it's not permitted to be defeated. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all and not one of his bones was broken. It may be challenged, but it's not permitted to be defeated. Psalm 34 verse 19 and 20. It may be challenged, but it's not permitted to be defeated. So there is no defeat in God's agenda for you. I said there is no defeat in God's agenda for you. The work of your hand may be challenged, but you must end up triumphant. Yeah. But you must end up triumphant. Yeah. So it's not unspiritual to be challenged, but it's unscriptural to be defeated. Just keep loving Jesus. At the end, it must speak. No matter the mockery of man, the glory of God will prevail. Amen. We are this proverbial song in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 1 beginning. 
He said, Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. So you belong to a very fruitful family. And he fenced it, <laughs> he gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press herein. And he looked that he should bring forth fruit, grapes, and he brought forth white grapes. Why? My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. You belong to a very, a most fruitful family. I am the vine and ye are the branches. Every branch made a bearded fruit, he pocket so he can keep bearing fruit. And everyone that bearded no fruit takes away. So, fruit bearing is all about bringing people into the kingdom. Everyone involved in it is ordained to remain fruitful for life. For life. For life. For life. And that includes you. That includes you. So, you are redeemed to be fruitful all around. Nothing is permitted to dry up in your hand. Yeah. Nothing is permitted to fail in your hand. Yeah. That's what you are from the mirror of the world. And that's what you have to do to walk in the reality of it. Just keep loving God. I'm proving that to do by being fruit bearing and bringing people into his kingdom. Simon, do you love me? Say, yes, I do. Go after my lamb. Do you love me? Go after my sheep. Do you love me? Go after my sheep. Let us not love therefore in tongue nor in words, but in truth and in deeds. Love has to be proven before it can deliver. Now, today marks the end of every form of unfruitfulness in your own life. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Number two, very quickly, we are redeemed as lively stones to command dominion. Matthew 21, verse 44 and 45. We talk about the stone in Zion. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Amen. It will grind him to powder. And as the Father has sent me, so send I you. So, we are redeemed as lively stones, impossible to be molested by the wicked. The wicked comes against you, is broken in pieces. You come against the wicked, you grind him to powder. Remember, I lay in Zion a stone. A rock of offense. It does not take nonsense from anybody. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them that stumble at the wall. Being disobedient, we are unto also they were appointed. You, you can't mess up. I mean that you understand it. Look at second. Uh, Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. He said, and beside, no, uh, is it First Peter 1 5? We are redeemed as lifeless stones built into a spiritual house. What verse is that? First Peter 2 5. So every one child of God is redeemed a lively or a living stone after the order of Christ. Amen. Understand this. So any agent of the devil that comes against you from today Amen. shall be broken in pieces. Amen. Everyone you confront having discovered their hiding place shall be grinded to powder. Amen. 
Say with me, I'm redeemed a lively stone. I'm after the order of Christ to command dominion in the midst of my enemies. To command dominion in the midst of my enemies. So you are an untouchable entity. I said you are declared an untouchable entity. You are declared an untouchable entity. One person got upset that a Muslim got saved in our church in um, Abuja. And they were putting on due pressure on him. He put my, uh, the seeker of the church on his door. They said he should remove it. He said no. So one of them went there and used screwdriver to start scratching. You know, my picture was on that uh, something. He went blind same day. Same day. Yes, yes, yes. The eyes started scratching. He went blind. Picture. Not my person. Picture. Picture. You are a lifeless stone. Amen. Untouchable entity. Yes, sir. You need this mentality, sir. Yes, sir. You need this mentality. I'm an untouchable entity, unmolestable, irresistible, yes. unassaultable. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's not the first time to, to take a device to a church. It, it, won't, it can't work there. It can't work. Yeah. It can't work. Neither will you escape, you die. No. It can't work. Number three, you are redeemed an ambassador of Christ to command dignity in the adventure of life. Everyone that is born again has a ministry of reconciliation, reconciling the world back to God. And it's called an ambassador for Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 17, 18, and 19. Therefore, if any man be in Christ a new creature, all things are passed away, all things have become new. And all these things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now watch. Verse 19. To we that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not in putting their trespasses unto them and has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. So you are redeemed to enjoy ambassadorial immunity dignity. You are representing the kingdom of God on the earth. Eh, who no, no, go, no. That's you. Any insult on you is an insult on the kingdom you represent. Yes, and people pay for it. In hard coins. Hard, hard coins. Hard, hard coins. Hard, hard coins. Amen. Because you are an ambassador of Jesus. And that you realize by committing yourself to the ministry of reconciliation. Bringing people to the kingdom. Establishes your ambassadorial status. Bringing people to the kingdom. Somebody ran down here from Oyo. Why? He was blowing some nonsense against God's prophet. And everything went haywire. Everything. Everything went haywire. Somebody came here, he was talking some nonsense, and God gave him one offensive order. In his mouth. When he opened his mouth, latrine. You know latrine? Because of the immunity that accompanies your salvation, as you take responsibility in reconciling the world to God, your ambassadorial status is established. 
And anyone who is offended at you is offended at the kingdom you represent. Yes, sir. And so there's a reaction from there. Yes, sir. There is what? The reaction. Any nation that insults the ambassador of another nation is insulting that nation. And the nation reacts in defense of the one that represents their nation. You don't. We're talking about the kingdom of God. We're talking about the representatives. You don't. And you don't have to carry a title to be. Just be committed to bringing people to the kingdom. You are an established ambassador for Christ. Man. You don't have to have a title. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a preacher. You just be bringing people to the kingdom. And then your ambassadorial status is established. That's what it is. So you are redeemed for dignity. Amen. Not ignominy. Amen. You are redeemed for honor. Amen. Not for shame. Amen. Just take responsibility. Take responsibility. Amen. Take responsibility and then you are free. Take responsibility and then you are free. Amen. Amen. Many years ago as a young believer, I was going from my place on a journey going to the motor park and then I heard my name called out loud and clear. I answered. And you know the meaning of that in a village? I said, you devil, why don't you show up? Why don't you show up? I went my way. You said, did you get there? That's why you saw me here. <laughs> Praise God. They call that Akweta. Mm. That is, they call you to kill you. Mm. When you answer, you are dead. Mm. Now, I answered and I'm here. Hallelujah. I said, show up! You Ow. devil. Show, show up here. Amen. Show up here. That is what touches others is not permitted to touch you. Now, if you ask Boko Haram now, Ametiela, what they call them, they, can you dare, Papa? They say, God forbid. God forbid. Hallelujah. When they ask you, you dry up. I'm not telling story. The forces that send them can't stand where I stand. Yes, sir. Um, a bona fide ambassador for Christ. Yes, sir. I was on the streets yesterday and we came back with 267 souls. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't need any nonsense security, sir. I'm heavily secure. Yes, sir. Guarded by angels. Hallelujah. That's how to be an ambassador of Christ. So I've, I've not just become one, not that because it's now pastor of a church. I wasn't part of any church when I was challenging all the devils and their surrender. Just be someone that is taking ambassadorial responsibility by reconciling the world back to God. No devil can molest you and go free. Amen. 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 Some fellows robbed some people of their cars at the gate some years ago. How many remember? And I said, I command you dead in 24 hours. One by one. Obvious report. One of them leaned on a tree and dropped. No shot of gun. <laughs> Ambassadorial authority. When the U.S. ambassador speaks, it's U.S. speaking. Who is speaking? Uh, you know, they have some nation they call what powers. Now, you cannot imagine the power of the Most High. Hallelujah. When you speak, heaven is speaking. Amen. Who is speaking? Heaven. Any time you stand speaking, it is heaven speaking. Amen. So don't mind title, don't mind any. That doesn't make you anything. There are many, many archbishops and preeminence and uh, uh, big funders who have been manipulated by ordinary familiar spirits. <laughs> Not even principalities. Amen. Praise God. So there are many ambassadors here. Yes. And from now, as you walk in that consciousness, your words will come to be with power and authority. Yes.
Finally, you are redeemed as a seed of Abraham for generational impact. So your empire won't stop with you. It will continue throughout your generation. Just like Abraham's name is getting sweeter every day. Getting sweeter every day. So shall the names of many in this church be. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord by being made the cause for us. It's written causes everyone that hangeth upon the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come unto us who are Gentiles, that we might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. So every child of God is redeemed to enjoy the generational order of blessings that Abraham had. Therefore, no one in your generation shall ever be classified a beggar. No one in your generation shall ever struggle for survival. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, to catch our picture from scriptures, we must continue to walk in the spirit. Because the word has spoken to you, their spirit and their life. So only men of the spirit can catch what God is saying. It is the language of heaven. So we have to be in the spirit to connect with what the spirit of God is saying in his word. Galatians 5.25, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Revelation 1.10, I was in the spirit on the last day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Every scripture has God's voice behind it. My mouth has spoken it. My spirit, it has gathered them. So behind every scripture is the voice of the Lord. And we have to be men of the spirit to catch it. We have to be in the spirit to catch it. Today's our covenant day of marital breakthrough. Marital challenges are becoming a great concern today. But we have the answer in the word of God. Psalm 68 and verse 8. Or verse 6. God sets the solitary in families. And brings out those that are bound with chains. But the rebellion dwell in a dry land. God said, love your wife as Christ loves your I don't care. This is not the kind of person to love. God said, submit yourself to your own husband in everything else on the law. No, no, I have my life to live. I'm not under anybody. Many have rebelled against the truth to cause themselves crisis. You take it or leave it. Truth remains the truth. And the word of God is truth. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy word is truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You want peace, subscribe to the dictates of the truth. You want serenity, you want harmony, subscribe to the dictates of the truth. The rebellious, that includes pride. How dare you come to ask my hand in marriage? You, of all people. No, he has said bye-bye to be married. So, no prophet can bail him out. Because God resists the way forward for the proud. But he gives more grace to them. The rebellious will dwell in dry places. 
the rebellious. Did you go to school abroad? <laughs> and then you now want to ask me in marriage? I've lived abroad before I was born. Okay, marry abroad. <laughs> marry abroad. And this is many people are behind their own affliction by being rebellious against the truth. By being rebellious against the truth. And they are paying back in hard coins. He said, I set the solitary in families. I bring out those who are bound in chains. But the rebellious won't hear me. The rebellious won't comply. Amen. Amen. Somebody's coming out of that rebellious realm. Amen. Do you know I am sorry to your wife can save your marriage? Yes, sir. Yes. They say, tell I'm sorry. Never. In my family, we don't say that. My father, you, you are no longer a man when you say sorry to your wife. My father told me, the day you say sorry to your wife is the day you die. <laughs> now, the father is not born again. He doesn't know the truth. Just I'm sorry. Do you know kneeling down once can save your home? But she won't. Why? She has a PhD <laughs> in marriage psychology. <laughs> and the husband is not properly positioned according to the thesis that he wrote. She wrote. <laughs> so she's married to her PhD. So she's now Mrs. P. <laughs> My wife and I never looked at any people going somewhere. Amen. But we knew we were going somewhere. You better come down. Rebellion against the truth will keep anybody in dry land. Wake up. All this modern day such we are lifestyle. The people you are trying to copy, only one out of every four marriages survive. Why don't you look where? And copy those who have the kind of results you are looking forward to. Yes, yes. There is nobody that suffered separation or divorce that's not feeling it 24 hours. Mm. Well, today marks the end of it. Yeah. Some husbands are coming back now to themselves. Yeah. Many will call their thrown away wife and said, I'm sorry, I just discovered myself this morning. <laughs> Many run away wife that's doing yo 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 on the street. <laughs> we come back today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every marital siege is declared over today. You know why some young ladies may never find who to marry? They have already defined the territory. It must be a lawyer. And the one God has for you is not, not a lawyer. He will never be a lawyer. He is not going to become a lawyer. So, you have to now create one that will now be a lawyer. I mean, I, you, people have some very funny things about life. He must be five feet, four inches. <laughs> and now the man God asked for you is six feet. 
And so when the man comes, he says, no, 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 no. It's five feet. <laughs> Amen. He knows the way through the wilderness. Those are all ephemeras. The real thing is walking into God's plan. I pray that no one here will miss God's agenda for his or her life. I pray that no one here will miss God's agenda for his or her life. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. You see, the person that I'm going to marry, my mother told me, must come from our local government. <laughs> and why are you going to get married to? It's not in Nigeria. It's not in Nigeria. So his local government is far. You say, no, it's from my local government. You say, who told you? My mother. Is he a prophet? No. He just advised me. You are breaking forth. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Every child of God that so desires has the God given right to be married. Male and female created he them. It is not good that a man should be alone. So I will make and help suitable for him. Genesis 1.27, Genesis 2.18. So he is the marriage maker. And he knows who is suitable for who. Glory to God. Amen. You don't know, I don't know. Never involved in my life on all our biological children that got married. Each of them brought who they want to marry, and then I'm sure you have checked from, with God. Yes, be blessed. No mistake. Please listen to this. Nobody knows like God who is suitable for who. Nobody knows like God. And in the name of Jesus, the one he has prepared, suitable for each one in this church, in this year of breaking limits, because the chains are broken. Yeah. We find you. Yeah. There shall be multiple marriages this year. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. I said your father is a marriage maker you can't be a marriage beggar you are forced in his priority if a man does not provide for his own house and for the people of his own household he has denied the faith and it was an, an infidel God will provide for his own house first he said let the children first be filled let the children first be filled so you are in God's priorities you are in God's priority for every of his agenda on the earth it is not fit to cast the food of children and give it out to dogs. Let the children first, let the children first be filled. So we are God's priority. And in the name of Jesus, that will be fully manifest in everyone's life here. Amen. Your sons and daughters are ready for marriage. They will be divinely connected this year. Amen. You are sitting down here in person, a child of the Most High God, a daughter of the Most High King. Now, this year is declared your year of marital settlement. Yeah. Either find it a wife, find it a good thing. So, marriage is a good thing. And has obtained favor from the Lord. But you know, he that ask and receive it, he that seek it, find it, to him that knock it, the door shall be open. And every good thing is our entitlement in Christ. Matthew 7, 11. How much more we go give good things to them that ask him. Many of you have made such demands at the 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm glad to let you know God has answered you. Yeah. And you will return with your testimony. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What to do to actualize 
our glorious marital destiny. Stay in love with God. Stay in love. All things work together for good. You can't find a man that truly loves God and let go of his wife. No. The love of God overflows to everything around you and your spouse is the closest one to you. You can't imagine and we can't find a woman that truly loves God and walks away from the husband's house. They may be hard for you to swallow, but that's the truth. You love God, it flows to everybody around you. And love forgiveth all things. It's interesting. Life, the key is just there. And you can't love God and not know. You can't hate your spouse and claim to love God. You can't. You can't hate your spouse and claim to love God. Whosoever does not love his brother that he can see, how can he that he loves God who we cannot see? It's not possible. So the love of God is the key to every marital issue. You love God in truth and in deed. You let go of every offense and this compounded offense that leads to marital crisis. You went out, you didn't tell me. Aren't you glad that you came back? <laughs> that there was no accident on the way? Praise God. I'm the head of this house. Nobody's contesting. This is not APC and PDP. <laughs> and you are the only two talking. So you are not talking to your voters. That is the one. It's the love of God is the platform for peaceful, serene, joyful family life. Just love Jesus. You will forgive anything. You will let go of anything. You will not document offenses. And you enjoy your life. Well, the good news is every tension in homes is over finally today. Yeah. Beware of pride. It goes before destruction. I therefore decree an end to every negative marital issue represented under the sound of my voice here today. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. As you partake of this communion, grace to live like Christ. Can you imagine Christ having marital crisis? Is the love of God shown to the world? The grace to live like Christ. To flow in revelation like Christ. You can imagine Christ saying, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. So I follow. What? The son of the highest? Yes. The savior of the world? Yes. The meekness required to keep flowing in deeper revelation by the day to mark the challenges of the day. Receive it now. <laughs> now, watch. You dig a few meters down and then you have fine water. But you don't find oil a few meters down. Oh, the depth. Many of us are just at water level. Man, I, I tell you, all 
what that bishop is saying, I've, I've been doing them, all of them. It's not true. If you do half of them, you won't be where you are. No. But how long will you be justifying yourself against God? Can you arrest him? No. Grace to work in practical meekness that will keep enhancing your depth of revelation to match the challenges of the day as they show up one after the other. Receive it now. Yes. From this coming on, every sickness and disease shall be leveled out. By the blood component of this communion, every oppression of the devil shall come to an end. Yeah. Everybody's living here today a replica of Jesus. Yeah. In words, yeah. in thoughts, yeah. and in action. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I just see many, many challenge homes restored now. I see many humble sons and daughters of God finding their God-ordained spouses. I see many proud husbands say sorry to their wife for what they have done. I see many arrogant wives returning with humility back to their home of rest. I see many sweet homes getting sweeter from today. I see many disenchanted children coming back to Christ in full force. Do you know some of the things we do put our children off the God we serve? Early in the morning, you call the mother, you are a dummy, you are a fool, and he's hearing you. And then you are a major person in your church. You have badge. <laughs> Amen. So the boy came to church. He said, I wish they knew my father. <laughs> After some days, I'm not going there again. Because we have put them off. You know why many pastors' children are off Christ? They don't believe in their God. Their character does not show who their God is. No. If that is uh, the one my father is preaching, the, what is preaching there? And he's making him do like this. I don't want. <laughs> I don't want. Please, excuse me. I don't want. Uh, go to church. Go to another church. How oh, do I know who the pastor is? <laughs> Maybe it's even worse than my father. I said, I'm not going to church again. Leave me. <laughs> because of our disposition, the end has come to that. Whatever cannot be named with Christ will never be named with any of us again. <laughs> Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Very quickly. You are here in this service and you are not born again yet. Wherever you are, I'd like to pray with you this morning. You want your sins to be forgiven. You want to become a child of God and live the overcomer's life. You want to have eternal life and make heaven at the end of a most colorful adventure on earth. Wherever you are, you'd like me to pray with you this morning, please turn. Please turn. You want to surrender your life to Christ, please turn. Very quickly, please. God bless you. Somebody else is standing wherever you are, stand to your feet. The end has come to all the uproars of the powers of darkness in your life. When you are saved, you become a child of light and darkness will leave you alone. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I pray with you right now and remain standing, please. Remain standing, please. Now, number two. There are people here that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You want to come back to God. You want to reconnect back to your father. 